Big spoilers for all parts of Kaiji coming up. Don't watch this if you want to be spoiled on Kaiji. There's a gamble you take when you read or watch a piece of media. You wager your time, attention and money with the risk of it all crashing down when it takes a turn for the worse. A character is killed off. The writers give up with making a coherent and competent storyline. The creator turns out to be a terrible person. Literally anything that causes you to dislike the thing that once filled you with joy. I think all of us have a gamble that we lost. And for some, it might be the current part of Kaiji. Although Akagi might take the place of Fukumoto's longest running series, Kaiji is by far the biggest story he has created, weighing in at currently 84 volumes. That gives it quite a bit of wiggle room for the series to change. To be clear, this isn't going to be one of those videos where I yell, scream and whine Hey, what's up guys? The manga is ruined! Oh my god! How could Fukumoto ruin Kaiji? <laughs> in fact, I think Kaiji is still great. What I am going to talk about is how part 6 of Kaiji changes up the standard formula of the story and why people might dislike that. And to find out the standard formula, we need to do a quick recap of all the parts. In part 1, Kaiji has no money and needs to pay off an exorbitant amount of it. So he goes on the ship, plays Mr. Beast style paper scissors rock, barely survives and ends up with even more debt than before. He then walks on some electric beams, his companions die and fights Tonagawa playing rounds of E card. Shockingly he wins and the cash reward is more than enough to pay his debts. But Kaiji gets too greedy and overcome with emotion, tries to go head to head with the big boss of Tei Corporation Hyodo. It uh, it doesn't go well. Thingies go chop chop, money goes bye bye. In part 2, Kaiji gets caught and chucked into a Tei mining camp. The rest of his life he will dig until his labour pays off the money he owes. That would be the case if he didn't scheme with his workmates and devise a way out. After hitting a big rolling dice he gets enough monopoly money for 20 days on the outside. He fights a pachinko machine with the help of his acquaintances and does the impossible. Yeah, a, a pachinko machine. Kaiji beats the bog, securing the bag for Sakazaki, Endo and himself. He pays off his debt, frees his friends with the leftover cash and everyone lived happily ever after. In part 3, Kaiji's prison camp buddies get him interested in a ploy to make some cash. Thus begins the ultimate battle of two men and a deck of Uno. Just kidding, they play a special version of Mahjong. Of course it's Mahjong. Fukumoto is essentially in love with it. Fukumoto and Three of Bamboo have invited us to share in this celebration as they affirm their love before us, pledge their faith to one another, and enter the joys of marriage. If there is anyone present who can show just cause why these two persons may not be joined in matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. Things are going well until Kaiji realizes that his friends are fucking two-timing him. Not only that, but Kazuya, Hyodo's son, rocks up. Turns out the money being used belongs to Tei. Tiles are played, schemes are made, Kaiji wins. He gets a fuck ton of money, but Kazuya offers to raise the stakes on another gamble and of course he doesn't say no. Part 4 is the closest thing to something from Saw being in Fukumoto's works. This is an unusual arc because Kaiji himself isn't in any danger. Instead, he takes the back seat and becomes a spectator of the main event. Kazuya brings Kaiji into a room where he spectates three men who have devices strapped to their heads. The main focus of this part is on these characters, where it develops their motivations and gets you invested in the death game. Kazuya makes a bet that all three won't survive. Kaiji obviously goes against that. A few hundred chapters later, Kazuya wins the bet, so Chang and Mario are gonna die. But Kaiji saves their lives with a lot of the cash he won from Maroka. He then goes alone with Kazuya to the actual game location. Then reality hits him like a truck. He's about to go alone to a possible death game. So he brings along the two guys he just saved. In part 5, Kazuya and Kaiji duke it out with a variation of poker that's controlled by a computer named after Kazuya's mum. Just just a little bit weird. Whoever loses gets a really sore head. The winner gets a shit ton of cash. As usual, Kaiji messes up and is about to die when his newly found bromance Chang and Mario save him. 
This gives Kaiji the drive to go full tryhard on Kazuya and wins against him. The fall renders Kazuya unconscious but not dead. The Bro Trio gets a whopping 2.4 billion yen and GTFO before Tei rock up. You can sort of notice a trend here. In all parts, game related gambles take place. From more psychological ones to physical tests and everything in between. Alongside this, Kaiji never really has wealth. He either has no money at all or a life changing amount, but only for a short amount of time where he eventually loses it or uses it for his wager in a gamble. He rarely has an instance where he can actually pocket it. Friendship is also a major theme throughout the series. All his companions either die, turn coat, or get sick of him. In part 6, these core concepts get turned on their head. Kaiji starts off the part with 2.4 billion yen and has two friends who are very unlikely to betray him given that they have selflessly saved each other's lives. Straight away, Fukumoto has set up a circumstance that usually doesn't occur. With the main characters on the run, the narrative becomes a cat and mouse game. The main goal being escaping Tei's grasp and to find a safe haven where they can spend their hard earned moolah. Comparing the conflicts that take place in this arc to previous ones, there is an apparent lack of game focused events. Instead of a volume spanning epic battle centered around, I don't know, fucking backgammon, it's more how does Kaiji open a bank account without being spotted as a wanted man? Luckily, the focus may be different, but the psychological aspect isn't lost. However, if you exclusively read Kaiji for them, I could see why part 6 isn't very enthralling. Another difference is the amount of comedy. The series as a whole isn't serious at all times. There are some comedic moments now and then, but not to the extent that part 6 has. At some points, it starts to reach gag manga levels. In fact, let's play a little game. I have three scenarios, and you have to guess the one that doesn't happen. Number 1. Kaiji and friends meet their neighbours who may or may not be zoophiles. Number 2. Kaiji dresses up as a grandma to infiltrate his apartment. Number 3. Kaiji and friends get drunk with two geezers camping and listen to their woes of being maidenless. And the result is... They all happened! Fukumoto must be having a blast writing this. It really reminds me of his other works like Strongest Man Kurosawa. As a product of more comedy, the tone is a lot less serious. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say this is probably intentional. There are very serious moments in this part and when they happen that familiar intensity that Fukumoto brings is felt. It's just that you may have to get through some goofy moments to get there, which I don't mind. I think it's great that the main cast gets to breathe and relax even though they technically are being hunted. They just love that van life. The dynamic between Kaiji and the main antagonist of this part Endo also affects the tone. Kaiji is a lot like you and me. He is a massive degenerate. He loves the gamba. You know he doesn't mind some $50 smackdowns on Big Red every now and then. Because he is a degen and close to the common man than a savant type, most of the time he is the underdog within the narrative. Usually he's squaring off with individuals that outclass him in some aspect. Brains, status, money, power, those kinds of things. In part 6, Kaiji has Endo on the ropes, even though he may still be the underdog given that it's three people versus a massive conglomerate. Knowing Kaiji however, this winning streak may run out. Kaiji has a tendency to bite off more than he can chew, meaning that his decisions don't always turn out the best for him. He always teeters on the edge of being an unstoppable powerhouse that somehow ends on top, or a complete bumbling idiot. I believe an event will occur that will set up part 7 to be the final showdown between Tei and Kaiji. I don't think that the manga will end with the Van Gang getting away, but if it does, a lot more people will be put off by this part. In conclusion, the manga is changing, some might like it, some might not. Personally, I wait for the chapters to build up and read in bursts to alleviate how snail paced it feels when read weekly. I highly encourage anyone who dislikes or has criticisms of part 6 to leave some comments below. Hopefully you all can be civil there, I'll be watching. I'll be watching you guys, alright? Keep it civil! <laughs> Everyone has favourites. It's a lure felt straight away or slowly built over time. Regardless of what it is, they become attached, entwined with oneself. But just because everyone has favourites doesn't mean everyone's favourite is the same. 
It's guaranteed that anything I am indifferent towards, someone else adores. Nobuyuki Fukumoto has created a plethora of characters and series during his lifetime. Gin to Kin, Akagi, Ten, Zero, Bright and Guy, Strongest Man Kurosawa are all great stories, but only Kaiji takes the place of my favourite. Whether or not that changes in the future, only time will tell. <laughs>